Uh, hi everyone. I'm a teacher. I, I ask a lot of questions. The, the entire talk will be a uh, few questions, few short stories, and one inference. My first question would be: How many times were you yelled at by your teacher, asking you not to talk? I mean, it may not be you in the class. Please stop talking. You there, black shirt and red shirt. Please stand up. How many of you have witnessed this in your classroom? Almost all of you. Okay. What place are we in? A theater, right? A movie theater, which has probably had its share of uh, a few dozens of hours of uh, hundreds of hours of uh, a movie screening, and a few hundreds of thousands of people coming here to watch the movie. Okay. So uh, we probably should ask the uh, proprietor of this place. How many times has he come inside this theater and said, "You people, please stop talking. Concentrate on the movie." There's a wonderful story line made for you people. Why are you people talking? And mind you, the classes used to be for 45 minutes, right? The movies are for two hours. I thought Bollywood. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about the three and a half hour long movies that we make in <laughs> Bollywood. Of course, yes. So if it's uh, Hollywood, it's roughly two plus hours, less plus or minus few minutes. If it's Bollywood, you don't know. Sometimes it will be a couple of intervals too in between the movie, right? And When the teacher says, "Hey, you red shirt, black shirt, walk out of the class," happily we'll just run out of the class, <laughs> right? So, but but if it's a movie, if it's an interval for five minutes, uh, we are scared if we miss the first scene. We'll we'll quickly go, you know, grab our popcorn and then come. Even better, you know, I will say, you know, drop it into my seat. My seat number is uh, 13B, right? Let's ask a question: Why? 45 minutes of torture in the classroom. But three and a half hours of gala movie watching, uh, right? You won't even blink your eyes, let alone yawning of the class, right? What goes right here? What goes wrong there? Question number one. Question number two. These are linked, seemingly uh, dissimilar, but quite linked. Assume I gave you a million dollar right now. Okay, you'll be happy. Of course, you'll be very, very happy, right? Five crore rupees, let's say roughly. You'll be extremely happy. How else can I make you happy? Uh, maybe give you some caffeine, or a good dose of uh, uh, you know, dark chocolate, or some substance that will make you happy. Give you the adrenaline rush, uh, or endorphin uh, rush, and whatnot. But then look at this: the first point, by giving you money without injecting any substance into you, you become happy. Now let's pause there and think for a minute. It is possible for us to make you happy. Sort of wirelessly, you know. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Um, it's uh, no contact uh, therapy. It is no drug therapy. You know, let me just open up the skull of the person who just got happy and watch what made him happy and touch that part of the brain which makes him happy. By the way, what what has this to do with the first question? These two are very much linked. Linked in the following sense. For this, I'll give you a quick anecdote. When I first met my a um, prospective girlfriend today my wife it was the first date in a uh, coffee shop cafe coffee day me the teacher in me said i should go and articulate about me and tell her convince her that i am a great person to be with what do i do what is this laptop <laughs> powerpoint slides i thought as a teacher i should make Ten bullet points why I am great. Ten bullet points why we will do great together. Okay, and I spoke to my dad. My dad said, "I mean, I've, I've known you well. I, I've made a teacher out of you. But please, for heaven's sake, don't be a teacher for the for the next one two hours when you are with this girl. Okay, try to be the bring the uh, non-teacher in you. Well, you try doing this. Walk out of your class and then watch all the students go by." how many of them have understood how many of them have not understood how many of them have misunderstood right majority of them misunderstand what we teach right so the question here is yeah why did my dad ask me not to take powerpoint slides the 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 the, the, the answer lied in the very fact that we are humans one thing that is common across these questions is we are humans we have emotions and in classroom 
this very thing is not observed. Okay, why is and how's of it? We'll quickly run through. If you if you sort of look at this question of open up the skull and touch that part that made this person happy, which sort of fired his neurons and made him feel good after I declared that he won a million dollar lottery, right? Is there any way we can get that done by talking, by singing, by giving an anecdote, by telling you a story? Is that possible? Of course, yes. And uh, one culture has sort of tried demystifying this. If someone asks me to write a two-page report, first thing is I'll take a break. I'll, I'll read about uh, writer's block and go on a vacation, feel stressed. The moment my boss asks me to write something, I, I do this. All right? And we, we as researchers, as the introduction reads, we write research papers. Writing 10 pages, that side, this side, you know, tires us. There is this work from uh, date unknown, I suspect a few thousands of years ago, comprising of 6,000 verses. 6,000 verses in a poetic language talking about how should a theater be? What is theater all about? How do you get the joy in the theater? What, how do you create a formula for theater? And one of the most important part of this work called the Natya Shastra, the word Natya there is not necessarily Nartana, not dance. Natya there means Natana. It is, it's about acting. One of the most important part there is called the Rasa theory. I'm sure most of you would have heard of Navarasas, right? It says, if you want your audience to stay still and enjoy your delivery of talk or uh, uh, a, a, a stage uh, dramatic or a piece of uh, 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 dance or singing or whatever you call it, you must ensure that you must massage his entire brain using this Navarasas. Right? It, it says, it says, a horror movie, you see, it's not always about scary stuff coming for two full hours. There will be some storyline of uh, some, some uh, spell of love, some, some, some uh, scene of uh, um, uh, disgust, some scene of uh, bravo, and so on and so forth. Right? Why do they include all these things? Why do they kill the hero at the end? I always wondered as a kid, why do they kill the hero at the end? That's because they want to cover this Navarasas. You go to a massage parlor, they want to, you know, sort of ignite all your energy points. As the idiom goes, don't leave any stone unturned. Don't leave any of this part of your brain untouched when you are giving a stage, um, you know, uh, presentation. Says Natya Shastra. It very clearly says, you have this Navarasas, you must give a roller coaster ride of this Navarasas, be it a, a stage performance or be it a classroom. This is precisely missing in our class. What we do is, sanity is position of a teacher, okay? A plus B the whole square is A square plus B square plus 2AB. I am great. A plus B the whole cube is A cube plus B cube plus 3AB into A plus B. I hope I am right there. <laughs> and then A plus B whole to the power of N is equal to summation I equals 0 to N, um, uh, um, N choose I into A to the I into B to the N minus I. I am great. If you want to reach my stage, you must work hard. And I walk out and all my, all my students are like, oh my God, my teacher is great, I can never reach his height. We are always like this, right? Tell me something, just, just recollect a good teacher in your life. A very good teacher, outstanding teacher. I'm sure all of you have one, right? Raise your hand. All of you have a very good teacher in your life. Just think of his qualities. Number one, he was definitely humorous. Perfect comic timing, right? He would dance in the class. A good teacher, a good presenter, mute his voice. Let him just talk. It will be very pleasant to watch him talk. See a radio jockey. All right? He did not move his hands, his other hands. But they will be moving their hands. Listen to a good speaker without the gestures. They are good at voice modulation. They are good at you know, doing dramatics. They do a sort of nartana in the class. We need this nava um, rasa sadhana by teachers. It is high time that we do it. And if we don't do it, we'll continue to be the, the, the same old boring teacher of red shirt, black uh, shirt, please get out of the uh, classroom. Right? You must work hard to do well in your life. Right? In this connection, we, I, uh, as a professor at uh, IIT, uh, I always wondered, um, my students are all very smart. Whatever I teach, they will learn. Is that true? Do you think 
we should bring in emotions in the classroom. We tried this 30 hour lecture called the joy of computing, wherein I believed as the very good saying goes, microbiology is not about microscopes. Astronomy is not about telescopes. Computer science is not about computers. So and we thought we should probably go out and then teach computing. Show them how computing is there in nature and use some dramatics to make it appear very interesting. Have all sort of Navarasas in our teaching. Right? Let me try illustrating a couple of those uh, teaching lessons. By this, I do not mean include all Navarasas in your class. It's probably not possible. The point is, try to make it a little more interesting than simply narrating the A plus B whole to the power of N formula. So let me teach some two, three concepts in computer science to all of you. I'm sure all of you will get it. So I, I need a volunteer. Uh, my, my friend is here. You can come to the uh, stage. So here is a question of what is called complexity in computer science. Computers are all powerful, right? I mean, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, power there because it's all of a sort of omnipotent. So we have Tanushri here. I'll ask her to take a A4 sized sheet and tear it by half. Okay, now you have two sheets. Tear it further, you have four sheets. Go on, and then we have eight, and then we have 16, and then we have 32. She's finding it hard, but but just in case she did, assuming that we gave her a very big sheet, she tears it uh, 40 times. I'll finish my TED talk, but you, you have all your time. So uh, the, 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 the moment she does it the 40th time, thank you, Tanushri. So you saw her struggle, right? That, that's the idea there, right? So the moment she does it the 40th time and piles these papers up and somehow tries standing on top of it, the fact is she can touch the moon. All right. the, the moment we tell this in the classroom, the students are wondering, is that true? What has that to do with computer science? Let's investigate. And you get all the adrenaline rush up of the students and keep that as the yardstick to teach the rest of the class. Okay? So you drop a nice glass jar from the first floor. It takes one second. You drop a glass jar from the second floor. It takes two seconds is what a typical 11th standard student says. Right? But then, no, that's the beginning of calculus because there's a built-in accelerator inside that jar. Right? I mean, it, it, it increases its speed as it falls. Let us compute it. Let us go to the first floor, throw a, may not be a jar, let's not be violent. Let's throw a ball and then compute the time taken. Second floor, third floor, fourth floor. Ask the question and leave the student. He will be in this Ascharyakara uh, rasa that he, he, he will start wondering what is the answer. He will have sleepless nights. I am reminded of this book, Resnik and Halliday, where the first chapter starts with a person watching the time and seeing the sunset. And the question is, can you watch the sunset and compute the radius of Earth? Right? So the, the point is, so you, you create that question, the adrenaline rush, and leave it to the student. I mean, he comes along, he finds it as good as a Bollywood movie. He can sit for three and a half long, long hours in the classroom. You must create, you must massage all his nav Navarasa regions of his uh, brain. Is that possible? Definitely, yes. We may have to choose when we are choosing our teachers. So with this, I conclude my talk. When we are choosing our teachers, we got to be doubly careful, especially today after sort of post-COVID, we have realized teaching can go online. Nothing is, a, I, I was very thrilled when people said it's going to happen in a theater, in a movie theater, simply because as the story goes, about 60 years ago, people who are projected here, the so-called Bollywood stars, were drama artists. And we all know, they used to struggle for a square meal, move around from city to city, you know, wear even torn clothes at times. All that some people got was a, a food for the session. As simple as that. And you know what happened? Camera entered the drama hall. They all now, now live in Bombay. Right? They call themselves Bollywood stars. They are the richest in the country. Now, post-COVID, we have realized that teaching can go online. And cameras come into the classrooms. Right? 
There is every possibility that teachers will be the, the future rock stars and they should be one. When you're recruiting, it matters to get a person with a, dim, uh, you know, uh, Shah Rukh's dimple and Kamal Hassan's acting skills and Rajini's style and uh, the acting skills of uh, Madhuri Dikshit, Madhubala and uh, so on and so forth. Right? It matters for us to select a teacher than a teacher who will see, stand in the sanity's position and narrate A plus B whole to the power of N formula and ask you to work hard. It should be a delightful journey. I'm sure we can make it if we can curate our lessons accordingly. It's a call to all the teachers to please make your classes filled with Navarasas. Thank you all very much.